Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shellcraft One and my old barn door. And I thought I would maybe do a little series um, of just kind of um, arting and playing with um, different things. Um, like these envelopes, um, we're going to make some of these pretty envelopes because I know in the last, or one of the last videos, I told y'all um, that I would show you how I made these envelopes. And so I have a bunch of them ready. And we're going to play with these and maybe some um, index cards and show you some different things you can do. Because if you're like me, I have a ton of index cards laying around in my craft room. And so, you know, you don't want to just stick a plain index card into, you know, a journal pocket or whatever. So um, I thought we could just play and have fun. And make some pretties and uh, maybe in this series we might even make some journal pages because what I'm doing with this stuff um, is I'm gearing it towards my next billowing journal um, so I'm as I'm making things um, I'm making them with that in mind so let's just play and have a little fun and uh, I'm gonna try to keep these short <laughs> I know I say that every time. I'm going to try. I can't promise, but I will try. But we're just playing and having a good time. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing that I do, hang on and let me clear some of this off and get everything ready. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is, um, usually what I do is I'll, um, if I want a coffee dyed one, um, whether it be an envelope or a um, index card or a journal page or whatever it is. Um, if I want it to be coffee dyed, then I'll go ahead and coffee dye it. And y'all have seen me do that. I just kind of brush a little coffee over. Now, this one, um, all I've done is put gesso on it. So, and you can do your gesso a couple of different ways. Um... Let me just grab a blank envelope and we'll just go from the beginning. Okay, so I have a blank envelope. So gesso, you can do a couple of different ways. And the whole reason for doing the gesso is to kind of prime um, your surface. Again, whether it be a journal page or envelope or whatever it is, a tag, whatever you're working on. Um, if you want to, you can prime it. You do not have to if you don't want to. Um, but before we do the gesso, I think I'm going to put just a little bit of coffee on here just to get the whole effect. So I have my nasty little coffee cup here, <laughs> and this is for coffee dyeing purposes, and I'm just going to drizzle a little coffee on the surface, and then I'm going to take this and just kind of rub it across you can do it different ways you can brush it um, but I'm just trying to do uh, something different all right okay so now we have our coffee on there I'm gonna dry this real quick and then um, I'm not gonna do it on camera because I know you don't want to hear that um, but I'm gonna dry it real quick and I'll come right back Okay, so that's mostly dry, and then I want it, I want it a little bit darker, and I want everything kind of covered, so I'm just going to take my coffee and go back over it again, and get it good and dark, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the back side too while we're at it, because it's not really going to matter, um, whether we, you know, dry one side and flip it over or not with the coffee. It will on down the road, but okay, so let me dry this one real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, instead of spending all my time trying to dry envelopes, I have some. This one's coffee dyed, so we're just going to go with it. Now, here's a little trick if you want to play with my coffee cup. I'm going to put some coffee here on my mat And just kind of spread it out and then I'm going to take my coffee cup and I'm going to sit it down on that coffee okay I'm gonna do it a couple of times just to make sure I've got enough coffee on the bottom okay 
And then I'm going to take one of my little scrap sheets and I'm going to lay that down in that coffee so that I can get that color and I don't waste my coffee. Okay. So I'm just going to pick up as much of that coffee as I can. I'm just playing and having fun and enjoying it. Okay. I'm going to set that one aside to dry, and I'm just going to dry the rest of this off real quick. Okay, now I still have my coffee on the bottom of my cup. We're going to see if we can make us a coffee ring on our envelope. Okay, so we're going to just sit our coffee cup right there. Let me scoot it down some. I hope I didn't. Okay. So now we're going to get us a coffee ring. Let's see if we can. Do one right there too. Okay. So now I'm going to dry off the bottom of my coffee cup. Because I don't want it on my desk. Okay. So I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Alright. So it's dry. So we're going to sit this one to the side. And I'm going to pull one over that's been gessoed. Because it does do a little bit different effect, okay? So this one has gesso on it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it has gesso on it. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can apply your gesso. So you can either do it, you can do it with a, um, a palette or a brush or a card. You can do it with a piece of wax paper, all different kinds of techniques and ways that you can do it but this is my gesso and it's just my homemade gesso um there's um i have a video that shows how i make my homemade re gesso if you'd like to see that so um i'm going to go ahead and um just get a little on my paintbrush and we'll just paint a little bit of it on okay and i kind of want a thin layer i don't want super thick okay so that's um, that's what it'll look like when you use a paintbrush or you can use a palette knife so we'll just get a little bit on the palette knife and you can just kind of swirl it around with your palette knife like that so you can do that you can use a card okay so I'm gonna just get a little bit on my card this is probably my favorite way to do it is with the card because it's fast and then I can make, um, let me get a piece of dry gesso in there. Let me get that off. Um, you know, you can make little textures and things like that or you can make it really smooth. So, um, I tend to, to go with the, um, the card more than not. Okay, and then the last thing you can do is you can take a piece of uh, wax paper or deli paper or whatever, and I usually like to wad mine up. And then I'm going to take my card and I'm going to put a glob of my gesso on my wax paper. Okay, and then I'm going to just, I'm going to turn this over so you can see the difference. Can y'all see okay? I need to bring you a little closer. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of splotch it on there like that and just put it in little different spots. And the, the wrinkles kind of help to give it more of a texture. Okay. So those are a few ways that you can apply your gesso. Now I'm going to sit this to the side and let it dry. Um, and I have a little drying rack over on the other table so that um, it can dry while we, while we work. Now let me get this cleared off of here. All right, and I'm going to bring over our dry envelope, okay? And 
since I've already done, you can coffee dye it because the gesso will pick up the coffee a little differently. Um, but instead of coffee dyeing this, we're going to use some ink sprays. Okay. So I have a couple of ink sprays in mind. And so I have um, some uh, glimmer mist, some, some of the tattered angels glimmer mist. I have, um, this one is, it doesn't tell me the colors. Okay, dried lavender. This one's crossed my heart. This one is dragonfly. There's this one and it is Golden Morning, I think. It's faded out a little there. Then I have this one, and it is Woven Burlap. I haven't tried it yet. A lot of these were given to me by a friend. This one's Golden Leaves. This one is English Ivy. And then I have some Lindy's, and this one is Sweet Violet Purple Teal. Okay. So, a couple of things you want to know when you're working with these ink sprays is um let me just check our time uh, put an apron on for sure have lots of wipes and you always want to make sure that you shake it up really well because you can see here in the bottom of the bottle where you know our color or our pigment has settled so and the one thing that i always do if i can find my cloth i have this um this cloth that i have been using forever um, and then once I get it good and full of color, we'll make something out of it. But it's probably going to be a while down the road. Um, but it's just a uh, one of those bar towels that you get from Walmart. Um, I think it's a feed sack fabric. Um, so you want to have this available because when you start to use your sprays, you want to. I always take the lid off because otherwise they get gunked up. And I put my towel over that lid, over the um, sprayer, and I shake it really, really well. Okay. And the reason I do that is so that, um, you know, it don't get all in my lid. And you don't want this all over your cry frame as you're shaking it. So if you put the little towel over, the, over it, um, you know, then you won't have that problem. All right. So what I'm going to do, a lot of people just spray it directly on... Um, your envelope or whatever it is that you're creating and you get that splattered effect like like that and this one's very light so it might be a little hard to see um but i don't want that um and i don't think i'm going to use this one i think i want to go with this english ivy first so i have like i say i have these in mind for my next billowing journal that we're going to work on together. Let me just make sure I got that shook up good. Okay. So what I like to do, let me just dust that off. I don't know what I've gotten on there. Okay. Instead of spraying it directly on your tag or envelope or whatever it is that you're going to be making, I'm going to spray it on my mat, and I'm so excited to get to play with my mat. Thank you, Laura. I absolutely love it. Okay, so I'm going to spray a couple of sprays on there, and then I have a water bottle. It's just a water bottle I got from Walmart, and I'm going to spray a little bit of water in that. You can you cannot spray water in it, or you can spray water in it. The water just kind of lightens the color a little bit more. So, And then I'm going to take my envelope, and I'm just going to kind of dip it in. And then see how I love how it's running. So I'll even tap it on my mat some to get a good run. Um, and I think I want to add a little bit more water to it because I don't want it quite as dark on the next few dips. Okay. We're just going to dip that in, see how it lightened it up. See the difference in that color and that color? So it lightened it up for me a little. And you just kind of play with it and um, see where you get with it. Okay. I love the drips. And you can kind of see how um, the gesso, the effect that the gesso gives you. 
see because some of this is in the gesso and some of it's not so um, the gesso really kind of helps with um, you know giving you a good um, difference in your pigments okay so I'm going to soak as much up of that as I can and then we're going to lay this to the side and let it dry now we have lo lots of pigment left here and so I don't want to waste that so what I'm going to do you can either grab um, an index card or you can grab another envelope or whatever um, I just so happen to have some scrap pages somewhere <laughs> Here, we'll just get a, diff, a new one. And these are, you know, just little pieces that I ink off on, or when I'm stamping, I stamp off on. And I'm just going to lay that down in there and get some color on that. And that way you don't waste your color. You know, and you can pick that up and use it. Okay, and so I'll just put this to the side to dry. And then this will be a cool journal page or collage page or whatever you want to use it for. All right, so the rest of this, we're just gonna go ahead and dry it for time's sake. Hang on for me. Okay, so I got that cleaned up, got this dried, and so now I wanna add another color to this, okay? And so I think I'm gonna use the woven burlap because I haven't used it before. So let's just see what it's gonna do. And before I add any water, I just wanna touch a little just to kinda see what it's gonna give me. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty dark. So I do want to water that down a bit and I'm gonna just kind of rub some of that off. Okay, and so we're just gonna add a little water here just so we can lighten it up just a little because I don't want it quite that dark. And then I'm just gonna go in some different spots. This almost looks like coffee. So you could use coffee too if you don't have ink sprays. But the ink sprays have a little bit of uh, the mica in it to give it a shimmer so it's all according to what you want okay so we're just going to add a little bit of that and then I'm going to take my draw off sheet and dry that up and again we're just playing just having fun and arting, I guess is what we're going to call it. <laughs> we're arting. <laughs> okay. So now I need to dry this real quick. Um, because a lot of people, you know, they're like, I don't have ink sprays. So I'm going to show you something else you can use to kind of get the same effect. So I'm going to sit this one to the side and let it be drying. <clears throat> And a little tip, I have some of these little drying racks like for cookies and things. If you lay that on top of there, they'll dry faster because they can get air underneath and on top. Okay, so we need to just pick up our color off of there. So what if you don't have, you know, the ink sprays? Well, you can use Distress Ink, you know, the Tim Holtz or... Um, really and truly any kind of ink. I have some stamping up. I, a lot of these I got at yard sales or were given to me. You don't have to spend a ton of money to be able to play, um, you know, and get, get crafty. So if you don't have ink sprays, um, grab your ink pads. Okay. This one is Shabby Shutters. This is a Distress Oxide. Um, the Distress Oxides, I'm just going to put a little bit on my mat, and then I'm just going to spray it with some water. The water activates if it's the um, the Distress Oxides. Um, the water will activate it, and um, you'll get some cool things out of it. So I'm just going to use an index card, and we're just going to go in and pick some color up. And then I have a coffee dyed envelope. Go in and pick some of that color up. Now this one's really light colored, which is good. You don't always want the bright colors. So I'm gonna get some on the corner there. And I want a little bit more right there. And I'm just dipping it in, you know, just kind of having fun with it. Okay, so we're gonna lay that to the side and let it dry. I'm going to get another one of my scraps. 
and just drop that color because we're going to use a different color too um, just to add a little bit of layering I just want some layers okay I'm going to put that to the side to dry take my this is a baby wipe that I've been using to um, wipe my my mat off and you can use that once you get enough color on it you can use it to make tags or index cards or whatever you want to make with them okay so let me grab a different color I have a um, dusty Concord okay I'm just gonna put that down and before I do that I need to I need to kind of dry these a little hang on let me do that real quick Okay, so I've got these dried, and so I've got my color down on my mat, so I'm just going to add some water, okay, and I'm just going to dip that in, dip it in there, and I don't want it, you know, I don't want it heavy, just kind of here and there, I do want a little more on that corner, and a little more on that top there, okay. And then we're just going to set that aside to dry. And then we're going to take our coffee dyed envelope and do the same thing. We're just going to add a little more color in random spots and areas. Okay, and I love how muted and light this is. Like the ones I did, because I've been um, working on some of these. Because I'm going to put some in some kits that I'm going to make. Um... And they're a little bit brighter, but this is particularly for um, that journal. So I love how light um, an effect that I've gotten with those colors. Okay, so now we're going to dry up. I'm going to dry up our mat, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you in this video, because we're just doing our bases today, um, and then once we get our bases made in the next video, we'll start, you know, adding to the layers. Uh, but that way they can be shorter videos and it won't take so long. Uh, but the last thing is, if you don't have ink sprays or ink pads, surely you've got some acrylic paint. I mean, you can get this acrylic paint, this Apple bar Barrel acrylic paint is like 97 cent at Walmart. So, um, you know, if you don't have the money to spend on um, expensive products like ink sprays and ink pads, uh, that's totally understandable. Use your paints, and I'm going to show you how to do that real quick um, to get your bases, and then um, in the next video, we'll we'll move on along. Okay, so this one is um, Forest Moss is the name of it. This was a, given to me by a friend, so I don't even know if it's if there's anything in here, but we're going to try it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint. Because basically you just need anything with pigment. Pigment. You can use watercolor um, paints. You know, you can get a palette of those for like a dollar or two at the dollar store. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. Um, and then I'm just going to add some water to it. Okay. So we're just going to thin out our pigment. And then I'm going to take a brush a brush here somewhere and I'm just going to kind of mix that up good just to make sure um, that all my pigment is mixed into the liquid and you don't get splotchy areas okay let me rinse my brush off and dry it okay so now I have another um, envelope that I put gesso on I'm going to so we're just going to dip it in this paint, see, and you can kind of get the same effect. Now, um, it doesn't take much at all of the paint. Um, I'm going to dip a little in the, see, see the difference in where you have the gesso and where you don't have the gesso? So it gives you a good layering effect. Okay. So I think that's all we're going to do for that. So let me get this cleared up and I'll come back and do, I'm going to dry this, clear this up, and I'll come back and do another color real quick. Okay, 
we've got this one dried and I think I'm going to use this. This is just, um, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's folk art, um, amethyst and it's got some metallic in it. So it'll give us a little bit of shimmer like the sprays do, you know, if you don't have any of the sprays. So I'm just going to put a little dot. Doesn't take much. So, I mean, you can do, you could spend $10 and buy 10 little different colors of paint and have yourself a ball okay we're gonna put a little water in that and then i'm gonna take my brush i think we're gonna need a little bit more paint so i'm gonna just drop a little, another little drop of paint because this looks pretty light whoops didn't mean to get that much <laughs> that's okay though because we're just playing and having fun so i just want to mix my pigment up really well I'm liking the way that color is. It's really pretty. Okay. All right. Let me rinse my brush off and dry it. Okay. And then we're going to take our envelope and we're just going to dip. Okay. Just in random spots. And just pick up some of that color. And if it starts getting too dry on you, spray a little bit more water. Excuse my reach. Mix it up again. Because you still have quite a lot of pigment. Now this is going to be lighter. But you're still going to get some, some good color on there. And this, this envelope has been gessoed. And so I'll show you here shortly. Okay, so you can see here where the purple is in the gesso, so it's a little bit lighter, and then here it's a little bit darker. Okay, so the gesso just kind of helps to give you some different effects. All right, so we've got that one, and I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that one, sit that one to the side to dry. Now I have some extra pigment here. So I'm going to just grab another index card and I'm just going to kind of scoop it up. And I like scooping it like that. Scooping it. <laughs> Scooping. <laughs> because I like, the, um, I like the, the patterns that it gives you on there. So... That's how you get your bases. Just play with it. Have fun with it. And um, don't stress about it. Because the whole point of this process is just to have fun. And it doesn't take long to do it. Um, hang on. Okay, sorry. So it doesn't take long to do it. And in a matter of no time at all. Like I played with it um yesterday or day before whenever I did it and I got I had a whole basket full of envelopes and um, I think I spent an hour maybe less just playing and um, dipping and I got all of these envelopes um, I did a doily pocket and all of these um, index cards in a matter of no time so and then if you you know you can have yourself a little basket to keep your bases in and then you have some bases you know instead of just plain white envelopes oh not just that <laughs> I did this whole basket too these are all gessoed all of these are gessoed and then I did a few coffee dyed ones you know so um that way you can have yourself a, a basket of bases and then when you get ready to make a tag for whatever journal you're working on or whatever craft project you're working on, you can have some bases ready that you can just grab, decorate them, and go. So in the next video, um, we'll do some decorating and make some really pretty um, yummies out of these. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment box below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for me if you will. And most importantly, play and have fun because that's what it's all about. Hope y'all have a great day. Big hugs.